Chatters, chatties, welcome home for a Great American Chat, a podcast where we chat about great American media. I'm Chad Maurice, and I've been away for a little while. I went to New York City. I went to Christmas Con. I got sick at Christmas Con. I was sick for a week, but I'm working my way back, and I'm working my way through these Christmas movies, trying to get caught up. Today, we are chatting about Santa Maybe, which premiered on November 18th, stars Aubrey Reynolds, and Samuel Witten is written by Brian Bruff and Brittany Wiscombe. So this is the story of Lila. She is a theater manager who likes to give donuts to her coworkers. She has a meeting with her board members. And they say sales are down 30% from last year. So they're bringing in some new guy to help with marketing. And Lila is just thrilled about that. This guy's name is Glenn. He walks in and Lila is like, oh, no way. You've got to be kidding me. You see, Glenn is Lila's high school nemesis. She can't stand him. He picked on her endlessly in school. He wants to bring in a guest ballerina to play the sugar plum fairy in the Nutcracker. Some bigwig named Flora Haynes. No, Flora Shelley Haynes. She is so big, she has three names. So we have a lot of fam familiar faces in this movie. The woman who plays Lila's assistant, the actress is Shona Kay. You might recognize her from Identical Love and the movie Happily Ever Emma. Lila's brother, Chris, is played by Dan Folks. He was also in Happily Ever Emma. Glenn's father is the grumpy patient from Prescription for Love. And he's played by Gary Sivertson. I believe is the way you pronounce that. Anyway, Lila goes to her brother, Chris, uh, over to his house for dinner. Glenn goes to his parents' house for dinner. We find out that Glenn's father had a stroke and doesn't talk. He spends his time crocheting scarves for people. Glenn finds out he has an assistant named Zeke. And Zeke tells him about this secret Santa gift exchange. <laughs> Glenn's like, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for this. Zeke tells him they are drawing names for Secret Santa. He says they give six gifts to co-workers, one gift a week leading up to Christmas. Glenn is now second-guessing his decision to work at this place. So let me get this straight. They give six gifts to co-workers, one gift a week leading up to Christmas. That means they start six weeks before Christmas. That means they start this gift exchange in mid-November. That's a little too early to be giving away Christmas gifts, I think. Anyway, Zeke gets Lila's name. Glenn asks to switch with him. Glenn is clueless on what to get Lila. So he asks Zeke if he wants to switch back names. Zeke says, too late, buddy. I already have all my gifts bought. But how about you get Lila her favorite cookies from the vending machine? So he does. Then Glass, Glenn asks Lila to have lunch with him, and she's like, huh, what are you up to? She does go with him. They try to have lunch together, but Lila brings up all the mean things Glenn did to her in high school. He apologizes and says, can't you get over it so we can work together? She says, just saying you're sorry can't erase all the mean things you did to me. She gets upset and leaves. She gets back from lunch. She tells Marie about the, this Christmas fair hayride back in high school when Glenn helped her onto the cart they ride in and she sat in horse manure that he put there. The kids called her cow pie for the rest of the school year. Marie says, why cow pie if it was horse manure? Horse manure, yeah, that's a good question. Glenn gives Lila her second secret Santa gift, a box of Band-Aids because she's always getting paper cuts. Glenn tells his parents about Lila and says, I hurt a lot of people in high school with the pranks that I pulled on them. And how can I convince her that I have changed? He wants to know. Lila and Glenn then have Thanksgiving leftovers sitting on the theater stage. You know, for a guy she doesn't like, she shares an awful lot of meals with him. 
he shares about his father having a stroke and how he lost his ability to speak. But now he crochets. He shows her this scarf that his father made him. And he says it's the first thing that he made or the first thing that his father made after the stroke when he started to uh, crochet. The next is secret Santa gift uh, Glenn gives her is a wreath made out of pens because she was always losing her pens. Then we get an ice skating scene. Lila and Marie go skating and they run into Glenn. Lila says, what is he doing here? And Marie says, I invited him. Lila shows up with no gloves because she lost hers, which gl gives Glenn another secret Santa idea. She and Glenn skate and he says, that he got fired from his last job because he didn't market some product well enough. He says he came back home to be closer to his parents and to help care for his father. He and Lila sit down and have hot chocolate. Uh-oh, there you go. It's all over. As soon as you have hot chocolate with someone, you might as well call it a day because you are going to be together forever. <laughs> he apologizes again for all the pranks he pulled on her in high school. Lila and her brother go shopping and they run into Glenn. Man, this guy is everywhere. Glenn and Lila get their picture taken with Santa. Santa, they know him. Santa asks if they want a ring for Christmas. <laughs> He's a matchmaker, Santa. That's what this guy is. They're like, oh no, we aren't together. Oh, but Santa knows you can't fool the big guy. Mr. C knows. Glenn asks her out to dinner. He says, I wish we would have been friends in high school. She says it's too late for that. Oh, come on. It's never too late to start a friendship. Oh, the, the nutcracker that the theater is putting on is sold out. The show is completely sold out. This makes Lila nervous. The ballerina shows up and she refuses to rehearse. She's a total diva. And the actress playing the ballerina is named McKenna Flory. And you might recognize her. She played the ex-girlfriend in the movie Journey to Christmas. Lila gives her a pep talk and the ballerina says that ballet isn't fun for her anymore. Lila says, well, then let's make it fun. Glenn finds out his secret Santa is Patty in ticket sales. She's been giving him snow globes throughout the entire movie. Glenn invites Lila to some Christmas park and they hop around on colored Frisbees. He says there are a lot of things that he didn't pay attention to in high school that he wished he would have, but he is seeing them now. He invites her to take a horse-drawn carriage ride and she freaks out. She has a flashback from high school and says, you're trying to get me to sit in horse manure again, just like you did in our senior year hayride. So she runs off. Zeke tells Glenn it's opening night. That means it's time to reveal yourself to your secret Santa. Glenn asks Zeke if he will give Lila his last gift. Zeke says, okay, but then she won't know that you are her secret Santa. Glenn says, oh, don't worry, pal. She will know. Lila decides to leave things in the hands of Marie so she can spend the night with her family, uh, delivering gifts to a family in need. Next day, Glenn sends Lila on a scavenger hunt to find her last gift, and it is a crocheted scarf, and she knows exactly who her secret Santa is. There is a note with the scarf that says, this scarf isn't perfect, and neither am I. If you're willing to accept my flaws, meet me at Santa's house for a picture. She shows up wearing the scarf. She says, you have changed. I admire you for that. He says, I'd like you to do more than just admire me. She says, maybe there's a chance. They kiss and that's the end. And they run the theater happily ever after. Okay, let me get rid of the picture here.
So that was short and sweet. Because like I said, I got to fly through these movies. So this was a cute movie. Things I liked about this movie. I loved all the Secret Santa gifts. I thought that was fun. Always love a good office Secret Santa. Although I've never been involved in one, but they always look fun. I like the redemption story in this movie. You know, we all did things in school that we regret. I know I did. And I wish that I would have done high school differently. And so I'm empathetic towards Glenn's character. Because we don't usually get a chance in life to correct our wrongs. But Glenn in this movie did. And I like to see that. So yeah, I like the... The... Uh, what I want to say. I like the theme of this movie. The redemption theme. Like trying to redeem yourself after doing things in your past that you regret. Really like that. And it was fun seeing all the familiar faces in this movie. From the other Brian Bruff and Brittany Wiscombe movies. Um, like Shona playing the Marie, the assistant, uh, the guy from Prescription for Love, um, playing Glenn's father, and who was it? Oh, then the Galila's brother, Dan Folks, playing her brother there, Chris. So yeah, that was fun. And I always enjoy seeing Aubrey Reynolds in movies. It's nice to see her again. I've seen her in a few Lifetime movies, and I've seen her in a couple other Christmas movies as well. And I enjoy her. The only thing I can say about this movie is I thought it has, a, I think it has a confusing title. The title is called Santa Maybe. Why is it called Santa Maybe? I don't know. I thought we were going to find out in the beginning of the movie, but we never did. Because um, it's actually when I first heard this movie was titled Santa Maybe, I thought there was going to be some guy who looks like Santa Claus and the story was going to be is he the real Santa Claus or is he not? You know, is he Santa? Is he maybe Santa or is he maybe not Santa? I thought that's what the movie was going to be about. But the Santa maybe, this title really doesn't have any, anything to do with this movie. Because the movie is about, like I said before, trying to redeem yourself from wrongs you've done in the past. And there's also that secret Santa gift exchange going on. So the movie, the, the movie title should have said like, should have had the name or the word Secret Santa in there somewhere. I think that would have been more appropriate. So that was the only confusing thing about this movie. Other than that, I really liked this movie. I thought it was a good watch. Really cute. And like I've said before, this year's a lot of these uh, Christmas movies this year and Great American Christmas Schedule have all been really good. So I don't know where this one's going to wind up. This may be in my top 10 or maybe wind up probably maybe 10 to 15, somewhere in that range maybe. But we'll see. Up next, uh, later this week, I am going to get to the Candace Cameron Bure movie, My Christmas Hero. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that tomorrow. Fingers crossed. Until then, <clears throat> you keep the faith. Keep smiling. Keep your friends close and keep your great American family closer. <laughs>